reasons. But I tried, but to, I tried to maintain, maintain contact, contact with my 10-year-old sister, sister. And she recently, she recently asked, asked me, like, why, why would you never come to, come to, to, visit, to her. visit her? One minute. One minute. Okay. Um, um, and I asked and myself, I asked myself you know, if, you know, she's if she's too young to know, to know, know that she's a colonizer, if she's too young to know that she's an apartheid. But then I, but then I, of, all the, of all the babies in Palestine, in Palestine who have lost, lost not only their present, but also, but also their future. We will find, we will find we're going to go, go, go live at 1913 for all We're going to continue, continue with your story afterwards. Thank you so Thank much. You so much. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Well, thank, thank you, thank you very much the to the, of the Cape, Cape, Cultural, Cape Cultural Collective, collective which, which seeks, to, seeks advance to advance our common, common humanity through, through arts, arts and culture. But now you, but now you noted, noted that. that. Good evening, good evening, everybody. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We meet today, we meet today in, in the Ashley Kirill Memorial, Memorial Hall, and we and chose, we chose this, hall this hall deliberately. Over there, over there, you see, you see a picture, a picture of, a man, of a man. The bullet, the bullet focused, focused on him. That was that the was twenty-year-old Ashley, Ashley Creel was murdered, was murdered on the 9th of July, nineteen eighty-seven, by the apartheid, by the apartheid police. police. This wall, this wall is dedicated, is dedicated to, his to his memory, and this wall, and this is, wall dedicated is dedicated to all the freedom, the freedom fighters here and elsewhere, and elsewhere who lost their who lives, lost their lives and, are and are continuing to struggle for freedom. You know, it's my, you know, it's my privilege, privilege to welcome, to welcome Muna, to this, Muna to this function, Muna al Kurd. He's a, he's a living, example living example of resistance, of resistance. and I'll deal, and with, I'll the deal with the nature of the resistance in due course. But let me but also, let me also introduce, introduce the rest of our distinguished, distinguished platform, platform on the extreme, on the extreme left. left. That's not a, That's reflection, not a reflection of his political, of his political views. views. He's, uh, he's uh, Father Wieder, Father Wieder, of the Wieder dean of the... St. George's, George's Cathedral. Father, Cathedral. Father, Father please rise. Everybody, everybody, everybody knows you. <laughs> and my, and my immediate, left immediate left is Mandla, is Mandla, Mandla, Kosi, Mandla, Kosi, Mandla, Mandela. Mandela. I had some, I had some effort in separating, in separating him from his wife and setting him to the well. Mandla, you Mandla, particularly, you particularly welcome, welcome the Salt River. You know, those, you know, who, those know who know me will know that I'm probably, I'm the, probably best the best place person, person to welcome you here because, because I, was I was born about a street away from here and I've lived here all, 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 all my life. We have, we have Rifa, Rifa, Abdullah, Abdullah Rifa, who is the, who is leader, the of leader of the... Yeah, please stand. Yeah, please stand. <laughs> Rifa, is Rifa the is the leader of, leader of Friends of, friends of, of Bizan, of Bizan the, organization the organization which I chair. Which I chair. And then, and then, lastly, lastly and most, and most importantly, importantly, it's my privilege, it's my privilege to, welcome to welcome our visitor. Our visitor, our visitor to please give, please give her a warm welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Manawi. Thank you, Manawi. We are privileged to welcome, to welcome you here. For many, for many different reasons, reasons. we welcome, we welcome you here, you here as, a, as a symbol, symbol of what Shah Jarrah means in the struggle for the liberation, liberation of, Palestine. of Palestine. We welcome, we welcome you here because, because we, recognize we recognize the importance of that event, of that event in the life, of the, the life struggle, of the struggle of the people of, the people of Palestine. We are, we are best, better place, better place to recognize, recognize that. that. To many of many us, of us who have been down the road here, you will see vacant, vacant land. That vacant, that vacant land, land district, six, district 6, that's where, that's where 60,000 60, families, families once, lived, once lived and were evicted. And were evicted. Many, of us, Many of us have spent a great portion, great of, portion our lives of our lives defending, defending the right of, the right return, of return to the people, to the people that, land. that land. We will use, we will you, use this, opportunity this opportunity of your visit, of your visit here, here and despite, your, despite youth, your youth, we will use, we will your, use your opportunity to reassert, to reassert our right, our right to return, return of all, of all District 6, district six residents to District 6. <laughs> but in all but struggle, in all struggle what, is most what is most significant is the courage, the courage of, the of the participants. And to stand, and to stand against, against the bulldozers of Israel. Of Israel. 
on each particular courage. courage. And that is exactly, that's exactly what, what Muna and, Muna family, and her family and brother, and brother the rest of the, rest of the citizens, citizens of Sheikh Jarrah, Jarrah, Jarrah did. The courage, the courage they, displayed they displayed in resisting, in resisting their, evictions. their evictions. We salute, we that, salute courage, that courage, but we also, but we also commit, ourselves commit ourselves to pursue, to your, pursue struggle. your struggle. What we fight what for, we fight in, for in District 6, we fight for, we fight in, for in Sheikh Jarrah. What we fight, what for, we fight for in South Africa, in South Africa or elsewhere, or elsewhere in the world, in the world is a struggle for the triumph, the triumph of, our of our common humanity, humanity. that underpins, that underpins everything, everything we, do we do in this country. This country. A struggle, a struggle to, sir, to sir, develop, develop and maintain, maintain our common, our common humanity. humanity. You will meet many, meet South, many South Africans from, from, from all, all walks of life, life in your short, in your short visit, visit here. Many were courageous, many were courageous individuals. individuals. Many pretend, many pretend to have been courageous, but leave, leave, leave that put aside. But there were many, there were many courageous individuals who constituted, who constituted the body, the body politic. politic. It saw, it saw Africa, South Africa, well, well let's say, free, let's say nation, free nation, a relatively, a relatively free nation. But, uh, but you, uh, you learn also, not simply of our triumph, but also our weaknesses as a, as a democracy, emergent democracy in the new era. Uh, we are time bound, so I'll ask my speakers to <laughs> we'll ask with the, our first speaker will be Father. Thank you. Father Weeder. Assalamu alaikum. Kwasi Mahi Benani. Good evening, everybody. And I hope, Jordan, that there will be a time when we could hear the unfolding of your narrative in a less restrained uh, context. I have been assured that I've got 10 minutes. Wow. <laughs> Because I told, I told Yusuf this afternoon, you know, when you tell a priest 10 minutes, that's for us, is warm-up time. <laughs> so to honor the 10 minutes, I'm abandoning aspects of my prepared talk. And just to say that I am the 19th Dean of St. George's Cathedral. And when we were planning the process of installation on the 22nd of May 2011 for me to be the Dean, I found within the treasures of the cathedral a cross, it was called the Cross of Magdala. And I thought it was a reference to one of the disciples of Jesus, Mariam or Mary of Magdala. And I proudly walked in as someone who identified as a freedom fighter behind this cross, only to find a month later that it was a cross that was plundered off the battlefield of Magdala in Ethiopia. And I was walking behind the cross of contradictions, which placed me very firmly within the house of the empire, namely the cathedral. And for me to restore myself onto the path of which Ashley Creel found himself. And on Sunday past, he would have been 54 years old. And we wonder, as I looked at that portrait that you referred to, Justice I, where Ashley would have found himself on the path of freedom? Would he have been in the locale of compromise, as I found myself? Or would he have held on to fortitude of liberation? And so I needed to revisit within myself what is the essence of belief, what is the essence of justice, when we look at what is happening, when we say from Kamisa to Al Shara, what do we say as people who are Christian, who are also coming out of the veneer of freedom, the illusion of what we have achieved, and we have achieved substantial, but it is an ever receding struggle if we do not adhere and acknowledge to what truth is. The truth can never be renegotiated and revisited. And I remember as an eight-year-old, it can rook in our eyes, not only literally, but there are evil spirits about. We can't sleep. There's a chasm in the house. My mother could not go to the lovely Irish priest, the Anglican priest in Alsace River, Father Fred Marx. She would go in the dead of night, cross the bridge, 
over into Natra, into Wantivo, and she would go visit there a Slimman or a Dukum. She would come back and she would take these Arabic prayers, these Jumachi that she had been given and it would be placed on a table next to her bedside next to the King James Version and the Anglican Book of Common Prayer and my mother would say the old Our Father and three Hail Marys and it will be an Anglican Jumachi. And I understand that as the essence of Creole identity that I am Muslim as I am Christian Muslim as in how we assimilate and take for part cause of the spirit the way that we are to be present in this world that Allah, that Yahweh as love divine has brought us into this world and I think as Christians and as Muslims we are fundamentally divided around the issue of Jerusalem or Al-Quds the Christian narrative is predominantly one that buys into a Sunday school story of the chosen people. If we are to have a show of hands, 99% of you will be Muslim. Very few will be Christian unless the Elizabeth Daphne Elsies. One love, my sister, was that lady. <laughs> but my point is, people, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, he writes in The Guardian, the English newspaper, 19 years ago, and he talks about his pilgrimage of solidarity to Jerusalem, and he's in the company of, 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 of Canon Father Naim Atik of Sabil. And he recalls how in the South African struggle against apartheid, the great supporters numbered also Jewish people. They almost instinctively had to be on the side of the disenfranchised, of the voiceless ones fighting injustice, oppression, and evil. And then he refers to a moment when he's walking with Father Naim, who points out as often as we would do when we're walking in, in Kildare Road, in Newlands, or in Lower Street, in the Cape Quarter, and other parts of our city that is now historically white. Father Naim pointed out and he said, our home was over there. We were driven out of our homes. It is now occupied by Israeli Jews. And Ernest indeed in her poem about Constance, says, Dava yella no tro, da it may mean a blame. Dava yalla no beri wine and picnic or diet my mensa kable. Dava yalla no driver plug diet my mensa kable. Dava yalla no kunas no spoon hungry waldo die hit my mensa kable. When we lived in those places that are now white places, land still not open and availed to us that is not only the return to District 6 but us the only time I can return to Cape Town and claim my land is that the Dean's parking bay at the cathedral is a difficult struggle that our identity from our commissar to from this place of Sweetwaters to Jerusalem is summarized by Desmond Tutu when he says my brother Naim Atik had said what we used to say, I am not pro this people or that people. I am pro justice, pro freedom. I am anti injustice. I am anti oppression. End of quote. And beloved, that is the credo statement of all who believe. Whether it is Allah, whether it is the Holy Trinity, or Yahweh. If it is not premised on the cornerstone of freedom, commitment, and justice, then it is idolatry. And there is no place in paradise for the one who worships a false construct of personal accum accumulation and of personal desire. So in conclusion, in conclusion, the cornerstone of a transformative, life-changing, humanizing belief 
is transformation. Because that is where God is found. And our aging prophet Desmond Tutu, whose 90th birthday we celebrated last week, he said then and he said repeatedly and he recently, as in about five years ago, warned the ruling party about the consequences of believing in the big crowd and the easy road of compromise. He says, injustice and oppression will never prevail. Those who are powerful have to remember that the litmus test that God gives to the powerful is the basic question. What is your treatment of the poor, the hungry, the voiceless, and on the basis of that, God passes his judgment. Thank you. Thank you, Father, for those wise words. Chair Gabriel, would you please come to the I got to greet the Sheikh warmly. When I was in Mecca, he read me on our phone. That's a special moment. Thank you very much for this. Words, uh, Father, Vida. You know, the greatest revolutionaries in the last half century are people who internationalize their struggle. Where Che Guevara, in particular, was born an Argentinian, fought in the struggle for the liberation of Cuba. When everybody thought he had disappeared and Castro had him killed, he reappeared in the jungles of Bolivia fighting for the liberation of Bolivia, that he was shot and killed by the CIA. It shows the nettle and courage of modern day revolutionaries, which we hope to be emulate ourselves. But the nearest we come to that is the Mandela family. Of course, he was my very good friend, Chief Mandela Mandela. His father fought for the freedom of this, his grandfather fought for the freedom of this country, he was jailed for 27 years. He lived to be the president of this country. And Chief Mandela could cross his, fold his hands and say, look here, I've done my bit, my family has done my bit. But despite that, and for a number of years, Chief Mandela has stood up for the struggle of the Palestinian people. We thank him for doing that. We thank him for his courage to recommit himself to a revolution elsewhere. And we welcome him here in particular this evening. Mandela, thank you very much. I may call you by your first name. Sorry? No, you can later. Can you Mandela, will you? Stand at the speak at the stand. If I stand at the speaker. Okay. Ninety-one point three FM Studio, the voice of the Cap, uh, and uh, we're just getting we we are live on uh, VRC as well as ITV, uh, Radio Islam, CII, and of course also uh, Al Ansar. Uh, Radio 786 and of course Salam uh, Media uh, coming you. to you live from uh, the Ashley Clear Hall here yeah, in uh, Salt River Road in Salt River. Our guest of honor, Muna El Kurt. It's an honor to have you amongst us, to our respected ulema, especially the leadership of the MJC, C. Shah Gabriels, is here accompanied by his lovely wife. It's an honor to have you with us. Also, let us acknowledge the Palestinian or Palestine solidarity campaign.
committee members that are here with us, the South African BDS Coalition, most importantly to us that uh, witnessed as young people, the United Democratic Front veterans that are seated here this evening. It's an honor to be amongst you as a young person of the time, but also let us uh, acknowledge the contributions you made, all of you, to making this event possible this evening. Beloved elders, leadership of the Tripartite Alliance and all its formations, community activists, from across the political spectrum, the religious sector and interfaith movement, and I'm especially honored to be seated next to Father. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, comrades and friends, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Molueni, good evening. Khoyenant. Allow me, Judge Desai, to start with a special word of thanks to a dear friend. For the struggle of the Palestinian people, as we want, want to witness a free Palestine in our lifetime. It is therefore an honor for us this evening to sit amongst one of the most outstanding activists, that being Mona, a Palestinian activist that together with her twin brother Mohammed are doing sterling work. In honoring you, Mona, we honor the great generations of youth in particular who played a seminal role in our very own struggle for liberation, freedom, and democracy. In honoring such a great role model of the Palestinian struggle, I honor the generation of youth that my grandfather was part of in 1944 who bred new life and militancy in our struggle for liberation, amongst whom were the likes of Anton Lembede, Ashley Pitamda, Walter and Masi Sulu, O.R. and Ma Adley Tambo, and other giants of their fearless generation. In honoring Mona, we honor the gallant, heroic youth of 1976, of the 80s, and the generation of the 90s, who led us to freedom and the democracy we so enjoy today. Today, we meet in this hall, named after a giant of our struggle for liberation, and you can see his photo in the hall, Ashley Creel, cognizant of the great contribution he made to our struggle for liberation and to inspire Mona El Kurt, the Palestinian Youth Movement leader, and all youth formations and structures in Palestine to take up the struggle where your fathers and mothers 
have left off. To use Mona's own words, I quote, we live in a new era where Palestinians can make themselves heard despite obstacles, close quote. Mona and her brother Mohammed emergence like that of Ahed, Ahmed uh, Ahed Tamimi symbolizes the rise of a new generation of youth who are fearless and resilient in the face of immense odds. We salute you and assure you that we shall continue to mobilize the youth in particular and all sectors in the international solidarity movement in support of our struggle for a free Palestine. In the 1980s, 1990s, many of you will recall the voices of youth reverberated with slogans, we shall not be moved. As we, as we rallied the world in support of our struggle and the free Mandela campaign. Today we say we shall not be moved and we shall continue to mobilize until Palestine is free. Our leadership and youth in the UDF, many of whom are here today, mobilized across all sectors of society. They were fearless in using graffiti, pamphleteering, going door to door, organizing gatherings in mosques, churches, synagogues, temples, schools, and every conceivable site of struggle. Even the funerals of our martyrs became rallying points and sites of resistance. Today, we salute Mona as she and her contem contemporaries have harnessed the power of social media to bring attention to the world of the atrocities being committed in Sheikh Jarrah, in Silwan, as well as in South Hebron Hills. Through your efforts, Mona, you have created awareness that the Zionists continue their program of ethnic cleansing, genocide, and crimes against humanity. Today, it is your voice that has brought Palestinian struggle to the fore and ensured that on every continent our voices are heard and will continue to be heard until Palestine is free. You are our heroine and your voice has sent a strong message to the world that Israel is an apartheid state. It is your voice and the voices of your generation that says fearlessly to the apartheid Israeli regime that we will not be silenced and that we will continue to campaign so that all the world may know that we demand an end to the occupation, an end to illegal settlements on Palestinian lands, and an end to the brutality that is meted out against Palestinians on a daily basis, particularly women and children. Your voice has inspired us to say to the world that Israel is an apartheid state and guilty of crimes against humanity and that the time is not far when the murderers of Dear Yasin, Sabra, Shatila, Beit Laham, Sheikh Jarrah, Silwan, South Hebron Hills, all of Gaza and the West Bank will face charges in the International Criminal Court and the International Criminal Court of Justice for the heinous crimes they have committed against the Palestinian people. We say to the world that every Palestinian in exile 
and all refugees in the Palestinian diaspora have a right to return to the land of their birth and the homes of their ancestors. Your voice echoes in the corridors of power, saying unequivocally that the apartheid Israeli regime, that your days are numbered. We want to convey our message to young people in Palestine, youth movement, and all youth formation in occupied Palestine, that we shall continue to support you and that your struggle is not in vain. We stand today by the commitment made by our global icon, His Excellency President Nelson Kholisha Thamandev, when he said that, I quote, we know all too well that our freedom is incomplete without the freedom of the Palestinian people, close quote. Let us support the Palestinian struggle by one, raising our voices on all continents, declaring for all the world to hear that Israel is indeed an apartheid state. Let us support the good work done by our young sister, Mona, and really all young people to harness the power of social media to raise awareness on the Palestinian struggle and the crimes committed against humanity and against the Palestinian people. At this juncture, we have called on all young women in particular, but youth right across South Africa, to boycott Miss Universe that will be held in apartheid Israel. <laughs> Miss South Africa has responded to us, Judge Desai, saying to us that they will not be involved in political words. The killing of innocent children and women in particular is not political words. And today I stand before you, my elders, and young people in particular. We are calling for a national protest towards Miss South Africa. And if Lalela Mswana, and if our Miss South Africa, Lalela Mswana, as she said in the contestants, she wants to empower women. She wants to stand for women's rights. Let her empower Palestinian women. Let her fight for the Palestinian women's rights. We therefore call on all political formations and all uh, our international solidarity movements to rally right across our land in support of a boycott of this world. Oh, in particular, sorry, in uh, support in, in to stand against uh, Miss Universe. Pardon me for that. Let's join our brave workers formation and dock workers in Durban and all over the world in refusing to offload or all the goods from apartheid Israel and especially from the illegal settlements. Let us also continue to build strong bridges between our youth formations and mobilize them to build a strong bond and an international solidarity in support of the Palestinian cause. Last but not least, respected elders, let us work together to, uh, to intensify the boycott, divestment, and sanctions campaign globally so that we may hit apartheid Israel where it matters most. Finally, let us call on our ANC-led government not to leave it to the Times magazine to honor our heroes. Let us take the lead and bestow the highest order of merit on Mona El Kut and her fearless generation for advancing our struggle. 
our struggle, the struggle for a free Palestine. Allow me, Program Director, to conclude with the words of the father of our nation and our global icon of peace, justice, and human rights for all, President Mandela, when he said on the 4th of November, no, sorry, on the 4th of December 1997 in Pretoria, on the occasion of the International Day of Solidarity with the Palestinian people, he said, I quote, the temptation in our situation is to speak in muffled tones about an issue such as the right of the people of Palestine to a state of their own. We can easily be enticed to read reconciliation and fairness as meaning parity between justice and injustice. Having achieved our own freedom, we can fall into the trap of washing our hands of difficulties that others face. Yet, we would be less than human if we did so. It behoves all South Africans, themselves and as well beneficiaries of generous international support to stand up and be counted amongst those contributing actively to the cause of freedom and justice, close quote. Long live Mona El Quds, long live. Long live the struggle of the Palestinian people, long live. Amanda. Away to forward with the free Palestine forward. Panting apartheid Israel Pante. Panting apartheid Israel Pante. Tabir. Tabir. Coming to you live uh, from the Ashikil Hall in Salt River, uh, in Salt River Road. And this is, of course, uh, Muna Al Kurd's uh, visit to Thank South Africa. Thank you very much. Uh, and she's Chief Mandela, 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 that was uh, an outstanding design, address. Thank you very much. And Thank you very much. And you just heard there uh, from uh, the grand of of the of the of of the grand son of uh, former of President Nelson Africa Mandela, and of course, he's really the Lili Mandela Mandela. Uh, reiterating the call that the people of uh, that, that we will never truly be Thank free you very until much the for people that. of we'll Palestine take it further are from free. Here as well. Uh, Sheikh, uh, Gabriel's came in late. I suppose it was Ishai time. <laughs> Maghrib, oh, sorry. I had my five plays wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Sheikh Gabriel is the uh, former president of the MJC. And he continues to play a dominant role in Muslim politics in the Cape. But besides that, he's a strong advocate of the rights of the Palestinian people. And also, he's my good friend and comrade, Sheikh Gabriel. Uh, shukran. Thank you, Judge Sirat. And because of time, I'm going to say Assalamu Alaikum to everybody. And shukran for being here. And I start immediately with my few words that I've prepared in saying that uh, I was looking for a phrase or a slogan that was used by Sheikh Umar Suleiman from the United States of America uh, just after the uh, Gaza bombings. And I, I couldn't find these words. But yesterday, a group of youth came to the airport with 500 packets of dates, three lovely dates. And lo and behold, it was written on the small packet of each and every five packets of the dates. Don't stop talking about Palestine. And that is what I was looking for. And these type of phrases is called in Arabic, Jawami ul Kalim. In other words, few words, but volumes of meaning. So I'm saying again to this audience, don't stop talking about Palestine. And please don't stop your efforts and your activism for the liberation of Palestine. 
Don't stop with your moral and your vocal and your financial support for the people of Palestine. As Muna correctly said yesterday, the Palestinian issue is not only about Sheikh Jarrah. It's not only about Masjid Aqsa. We know Masjid Aqsa for the Muslims around the world. It's very close to our hearts. But the Palestinian issue is not only about Masjid Aqsa. It's about each and every inch, that is what Muna said yesterday, of Palestine. It's about every Palestinian. Our Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said when he was making tawaf around the sacred house in Makkah. And he explained to them the sacredness of this house. And then he said, but the honor and the dignity of a human being, a human being, is far more greater than the secrecy of the sacredness of the holy house, the Kaaba in Makkah al Mukarramah. So it is, it is to do with every, each and every Palestinian, each and every Palestinian child. A few weeks ago, I saw a video about an Israeli soldier admitting that at night time, randomly, they would enter and raid the homes of Palestinian people in the middle of the night in West Bank. And I saw the video and my eyes fell on this young six-year-old girl shoulders standing in the house with machine guns and I saw the fright and the fear and the panic in the eyes of this little girl. This is what the Palestinian issue is all about. <clears throat> Twice in the Gaza, I've been at a gathering for the families of the prisoners, the mothers, the wives, the children. The mother didn't see her son for 20 years, 30 years. She's not even allowed to visit her son. The wife is not allowed to visit her husband. The children are not allowed to visit their fathers. And you see mothers holding the picture of their son with tears in their eyes. Huh? Yeah. In the month of September, I think the 29th or 30th of September, in the year 2000, Muhammad Durra was murdered and killed by the Israeli army. On a day that was supposed to be one of his most happiest days, because his father saved money and saved money to buy him a bicycle, and they were on their way to buy a base bicycle, and the Israeli army murdered him. So I, I told Professor Yusuf, I'm only going to speak for three minutes, so I've only got about 20 seconds left. I, I just want to say that Muna didn't come here for sightseeing and just a visit. She came here to get our full support. She came here to hear us. Yeah. She's here to request not to stop talking about Palestine. And in conclusion, I want to say, may Allah protect Muna and all the youth of Palestine. And she was already arrested. And we make no doa that Allah must protect her. But we want to say to her here from Cape Town in South Africa, if she's going to be arrested again, we are going to raise our voices here in Cape Town until they will release her. Inshallah. Shukran. Thank you, Sir Gabriels. You know, you touch on a very important point, and that's the arrest of young people. You know, uh, when Ashley Kili was around, we as lawyers made a great noise if people under the age of 18 were arrested, youths. And we succeeded very often on the basis that the arrest arrested person was a youth. But what happens in Israel today is considerably worse. They arrest 10 and 11 year olds arrest and detain them and that's totally unacceptable to any system of civilized legal order so that's one of the issues which an international court will consider when you manage to indict the israeli leadership in the world court our next speaker is abdullah grifat is of mizan international mizan is an organization uh, which is based in israel and they consist of lawyers, 
who did who do very much the sort of same work that we as lawyers did in the 80s and 90s. They lawyers, they run around when people are arrested, try to get them out on bail, try to defend them and do their best to mitigate the rigors of the Israeli legal system. But Mizan is also now international. The international organization is the Friends of Mizan and I chair the Friends of, uh, Friends of Mizan. It's my privilege to call upon Abdullah Grifat to say a few words. Assalamu uh, alaikum everyone. Uh, thank you judge for this, for the introduction. Thank you to Father Wida, Chief Mandla, uh, Sheikh Ibrahim, thank you very much. And shukran to everyone who has come here today to honor the, our guests and to listen to our struggle and for your constant support. Uh, as Judge Desai say that uh, I've been trying to, you know, uh, work with, the, with these lawyers to, inshallah, support the Palestinian cause. But I've, I've been in particular since I came to this court looking at uh, the picture of Ashley Creel and I'm actually remembering some of the cases that we have been representing. And one particular case came to my mind, which is about a young man who has three daughters, and when his name is Muhammad Jilani, from Jerusalem as well, when he was driving his car with his children. And I just couldn't, you know, take my mind off this particular story where a soldier by the name of Maxim, who just came to Palestine to occupy Palestine a few years before, he actually stepped on the foot on the, on, uh, on the neck of, uh, of Muhammad Jilani and shot him in the head from point zero. And I just like, when I'm looking at that picture in front of me, I, I couldn't like take that image from my head. And it, it's such a great, you know, opportunity for us as Palestinians to come and share our history and to share our struggle with the South African community. As judge say that our Mizan is a legal organization that has been trying to represent Palestinians in Israeli courts. And we have been facing so many challenges because, you know, in Israel there is no justice. There is no way for us to fight for justice, but we are trying our best. We will continue trying our best no matter what they do, and they will never crush our will to fight for justice. Which is the most important thing is that we have a will that can never be crushed. Now we have come to South Africa and the first person that I went to was Judge Desai and I told him about the work that we have been doing and he was, uh, he blessed us by saying that, by offering us actually that can I be part of this organization? And we told him please, we would like you to be, you know, the national chairperson of Friends of Misa in South Africa. It was such a great opportunity for me when, I, when the lawyers told me that we want you to represent us in, in South Africa. Because we see that there is a deep connection between the Palestinian struggle, the daily struggles that we are going through in Palestine, and the history of the South African people in defending you know, their rights and in beating and defeating uh, apartheid. We want to learn from the South African struggle, from the transition period, and from the post-democratic you know, era, and because we want to learn from the achievements and from the lessons and the challenges that have been, you know, that you have faced. And I'm sure that one day we will all sit in Palestine and say that, look, South Africa and Palestine and have been, you know, going through a joint struggle. And then one day we, all of us, hopefully in our lifetime, we celebrate in Palestine the freedom of the Palestinian people. I, do, I don't want to take much time because some of you, um, maybe, uh, I'm, I hope I'm not the only one who's getting hungry. So, <laughs> uh, I, I really hope that soon, soon enough, Munal Kurd, her brother, all of us who are here in this, uh, you know, lovely dinner, will be in Palestine celebrating with those prisoners, with those who have lost their homes and their lands, the refugees who have been, you know, in ref living in refugee camps since 1948. I hope we all can be, can return to Palestine and say that Palestine is finally free, like you have said in South Africa. And I hope that one day, 
We don't have to come to South Africa, you know, asking for help to support the Palestinian cause. We will come to celebrate with South Africans the Palestinian victory. Thank you very much. You to the voice of the gap, like 21.3 FM stereo, and of course uh, this is uh, uh, the Muna Al Kurd uh, tour to SA, and of course uh, uh, you just listened there to Abdullah Rifat, uh, from uh, he's a Palestinian activist from Friends of Mizan. Uh, we of course are also broadcasting live on your VS, but also Al Ansar uh, Radio 786, uh, Salam Media as well as Radio Islam, ITV, and CII. And of course, uh, we will be I taking Aisha that, uh, a little bit later this evening due to uh, trying to get the uh, maximum the that, uh, uh, length of the program. And uh, so, yeah, we do, do be advised that we might be taking Aisha a little bit later yeah. than uh, scheduled. But of course, uh, uh, we will uh, be endeavoring to cover the Africa, program to its fullest to bring you uh, but not it's only the, 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 all of the speakers, but also we'll now, be uh, trying to get you uh, when I could uh, address, which, uh, of course, uh, you of all of we've been waiting for uh, for quite some time. We know that uh, Muna Al-Kud, as Muna an activist uh, yeah, in, uh, in, 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 in the Sheikh Jarrah region, region of, uh, of Jerusalem. Um, she went viral recently struggle, with her address to uh, Israeli authorities. Uh, and the also, she was recently young, imprisoned and also released, and this made news around the world. It was the first time I think that Chief Jarad, uh, that region of Jerusalem, uh, was highlighted and put front and center uh, on the global stage. Well, we now uh, go back to Sheikh, uh, or rather, uh, Judge Raj Desai as he addresses the crowd and uh, prepares them uh, for Amuna Al Khud's address, which will be happening soon. The way that you do. Resistance and the extent that you do. And thank you very much for coming to South Africa. And before you even speak, I want to say this that from all of us here in this hall, you have our unconditional support. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. Hi, everyone. And thank you for hosting us today. I'm very, or, I'm very honored to be here with you, Father, all of you. Um, I'm going to speak in Arabic, so it will be like more comfortable to be. And Abdullah will translate. Okay? Yeah? You're fine with it? <laughs> Do I have a choice? <laughs> okay, and you can listen to our beautiful language, Arabic language. في البداية بدي أشكر أشكركم على دعوتنا للحضور إحنا جد أنا وبتكلم عن نفسي جدا سعيدة في وجودي هون في جنوب أفريقيا للمرة الثانية وسعيدة جدا بكل الحفاوة والترحيب اللي وجدته من أهلي الجنوب أفريقيين هون في جنوب أفريقيا. First of all, I would like to thank you for. <laughs> so first of all, I would like to thank you all for, for receiving me here in South Africa and for your support, your constant support. I'm very uh, happy and very honored to be with my own family here in South Africa for the second time uh, in South Africa. أنا من حي الشيخ جراح اللي كل كلكم سمعتوا عنه في الآونة الأخيرة في السوشيال ميديا وفي الإعلام. لكني معكم اليوم لأنقل لكم صوت كل فلسطيني بعاني يوميا من انتهاكات الاحتلال في كل أماكن تواجده في الشيخ جراح وفي سلوان وفي لفتة في جبل صبيح في راس العمود في البلدة القديمة في المسجد الأقصى في كل أماكن تواجد الفلسطيني I am here, I came from Sheikh Jarrah. You have all heard about Sheikh Jarrah on social media and in media in general. But I don't come here to only represent and speak about Sheikh Jarrah. I'm here to, to speak about Palestine as a whole. I'm here to speak about, about Sheikh Jarrah, Silwan, Lifta, Jabal Sbeh, Ras Al Amud, the old city of Jerusalem, 
and the entirety of Jerusalem, the West Bank, the 1948 occupied territories, Gaza and Palestine, as well as the refugees. في وحدات حي الشيخ جراح من المكان اللي أنا جاي منه هناك خمسمائة شخص وأكثر معرضين للتهجير القسري معرضين لأنهم يفقدوا منازلهم ويسكنوا الشوارع لأنه جمعية استيطانية غير قانونية تدعي ملكيتها لأراضينا ومنازلنا لكن مثل ما إحنا في الشيخ جراح بنواجه تهجير, تهجير قصري هناك مئات آلاف الفلسطينيين اللي بواجهوا جميع أشكال الانتهاكات من قبل حكومة الاحتلال ومستوطنيه تهجير قصري هدم منازل تطهير عرقي كل جرائم الحرب اللي بتقوم في بها إسرائيل على أراضي فلسطين كالاعتقال أيضا الضرب السحل التنكيل بكل فئات المجتمع الفلسطيني أطفالا كانوا أم شيوخ أم كبار أم نساء At the moment there are 500 people in Sheikh Jarrah alone who are now living under imminent threat of being forcibly removed from their houses. Just because there is an Israeli settler group who came only a few years ago to exist, claims that it owns the land which we have been living there for decades. But at the same time, we remember that there are other hundreds and thousands of Palestinians who are facing on a daily basis the brutality of the Israeli regime. They are facing house demolitions and ethnic cleansing. They are facing crime or war crimes. There are children and elderly men and women. There are youth who have been struggling on a daily basis across Palestine, not only in Sheikh Jarrah. اليوم إحنا قاعدين نتعشى صحة وعافية على الجميع بالمناسبة لكن في أثناء عشان اليوم هناك ست أسرة فلسطينيين مضربين عن الطعام رفضاً واحتجاجاً على اعتقالهم الإداري بدون أي تهمة لنيل حريتهم وأحد هؤلاء الأسرة وصل يوم المئة على التوالي في إضرابه المفتوح عن الطعام لنيل حريته. So as we are waiting here for the food to come, and I hope you enjoy it, we also remember that there are at the moment, as we speak, six prisoners who are going through a hunger strike. Those six prisoners are demanding their freedom because they are, you know, being imprisoned under uh, administrative detention, without any trial, without any charges, just because they are Palestinians. They chose to go hungry and to, f to fast and to, to starve to f because it was the last means for them to fight for their own freedom. One of those uh, prisoners has reached his 100th day of fasting in the Israeli prison. جاي اليوم أنقل لكم صوت أهالي حي الشيخ جراح اللي جزء منهم اليوم موجود على الحيطة هون واللي بتمنى منكم إنكم تقرأوا قصصهم هدول جزء بسيط منهم لكن كل فرد في حي الشيخ جراح له قصة كل شخص فلسطيني له قصة لازم نسمعها وندعمها مهم تعرفوا إن القضية الفلسطينية مش مختزلة فيي أو بأخوي محمد أو بعائلتي القضية الفلسطينية هي قضية كل فلسطيني في فلسطين وخارج فلسطين هي قضية كل حجر فلسطيني كل, كل سنتيمتر في هذه الأرض فمن المهم إنه ندعم كل شيء فلسطيني وليس فقط نحن كأفراد It is important for Muna as well to represent the people of Sheikh Jarrah and to present the pictures here of the people from the neighborhood from Sheikh Jarrah. She also says that we have to learn about every one of them, about their struggles, about daily, their daily struggles, because every Palestinian, every, every single, every individual,
has a struggle that they are going through. Palestine is not only about Muna, it's not about her brother Muhammad, it's not only about her family, it's not only about Sheikh Jarrah. It's a, the whole of Palestine is struggling. And the whole, the entirety of Palestinian people, they are all fighting for every inch in Palestine. So the Palestinian people and the Palestinian land is, is entirely and collectively, we are fighting for freedom together. صح كان لي دور في الحراك اللي سمعتوا عنه في الآونة الأخيرة خاصة على السوشيال ميديا لكن هذه مسؤوليتي هذا واجبي تجاه بيتي وأرضي ووطني كان مهم كمان أحكي لكم إنه كل شاب وشابة فلسطينية كان لهم دور في هذا الحراك على الأرض وعلى السوشيال ميديا لذلك أنا اليوم بدي أطلب من كل الشباب الصغار في جنوب أفريقيا سواء كانوا صبايا أو شباب إنه يأخذوا مسؤوليتهم في إنهم يدافعوا عن القضية الفلسطينية لأن القضية الفلسطينية بتشبهكم إنتوا عشتوا اللي إحنا عمالنا بنعيشه اليوم إنتوا عشتوا فصل عنصري إحنا ما زلنا بنعيش هذا الفصل العنصري يوميا ومهم أحكي لكم إنه في فلسطين مش بس هناك فصل عنصري في تهجير قصري وهدم منازل واعتقال وضرب واعتداء يوميا فمن المهم من الشباب اليوم ياخذوا مسؤوليتهم ويتحركوا احنا بدنا تحرك توعيه اكثر عن القضيه الفلسطينيه وتنظيم فعاليات شو ما كان شكلها لدعم القضيه الفلسطينيه وايضا ادعو كل الجنوب أفريقيين كبارا كانوا أم صغارا إنهم يحاولوا يضغطوا على حكومة جنوب أفريقيا لوقف وقطع علاقاتها مع الاحتلال هذا الاحتلال اللي كل يوم بضربنا وبقتلنا When it says that she had a small role in the movement in Sheikh Jarrah in the past few months, but it was only her duty. It was her responsibility to do what she has done. She was fighting for her house, for her land, and for her, for her homeland. There, have, there are many other youth in Palestine who have been fighting, whether it's on social media or in the ground. Many of them have been arrested in the, in the past few months. So we have to remember all of those. For that reason, I also send a message to the young people of South Africa to continue supporting and to stand up for Palestine and to do more action and to be more active and proactive on the ground. You and as South Africans have lived what we are living today. What you passed is our present. It's very important for, again, for the, especially the young people to act on the ground, to organize events, and to protest and to organize different ways and methods of protesting against the Israeli brutality. You, have, you can, as the people of Sheikh Jarrah have tried to be, uh, uh, to create and to be more creative in the struggles, she also urges you to also be creative in the ways and the methodology that you use in fighting against the Israeli regime. I also urge she also urged the entire people of South Africa to, to keep pushing and pressuring on your South African government to support the Palestinian people. مش فقط لا نريد فقط من حكومة جنوب أفريقيا دعمنا كفلسطينيين لكن كما كنت أقول دائما نحن بحاجة لتحرك لفعل ملموس وبالتالي أنا بدعوكم وبطلب منكم تضغطوا على حكومة جنوب أفريقيا وبالتالي كل حكومات العالم لوقف وقطع علاقاتها مع هذا الكيان الصهيوني الغاصب الفاشي المتطرف اللي بقتلنا يوميا اللي بيعتقلنا يوميا اللي بيهجرنا يوميا إحنا مجبرين على التعامل مع محاكم احتلالية استعمارية استيطانية فاشية برأسها قضاء مستوطنين يهود لبسين الكباء على رأسهم 
ووضعين قوانين لخدمة الاستيطان والمستوطنين وليس لخدمة أنا كفلسطينية لكن إحنا مجبرين على التعاطي والمثول أمام هذه المحاكم لكننا لا نؤمن بهذه المحاكم وبالتالي نحن نؤمن بالحراك الشعبي على الأرض في فلسطين وفي خارج فلسطين نحن نؤمن بشعبنا الفلسطيني ونؤمن بأحرار العالم كشعب جنوب أفريقيا للاستمرار في دعمنا حتى تحرير فلسطين كل فلسطين من البحر للنهر So we ask you to also mobilize the South African government, not to only support the Palestinian people, but also to, to act for the, for the Palestinian people. We want, we ask you to help and to push your government to also cut its ties and its relations with the, with the Israeli regime. We in Sheikh Jarrah are fighting against the Israeli legal system and because we have to stand in the Israeli court. It's not something we choose. We understand that all the Israeli judges, they are all settlers, Jewish settlers who came from overseas and they put laws and regulations to fight against us and to back and to support the settlers because they, are, they themselves are settlers supporting a settler regime. We have it's, it is very unfortunate that we have to deal with these, with these courts. Even though we, we do not believe in them, we do not think that they are legitimate at all. They are, it's an illegitimate legal system, however we have to fight in it. We believe in the popular struggle, and we believe in the connection and the support of people like yourselves on the ground to support the, the freedom of Palestine from the river to the sea. طولت عليكم بعرف بس بدي أختم لما القاضي حكالي هذه صورة مين اللي موجه عليها رصاصة خلوا هاي الصورة قدامكم ويعرفوا إنه كل يوم في شخص فلسطيني موجه نحوه رصاصة ممكن أنتوا تكونوا شارينها بعدم مقاطعتكم لمنتجات الاحتلال شكرا لكم Earlier when we came in, Daj Desai explained a little bit about the image of Ashley Green there. And she says that these all look at the picture and remember that on a daily basis there is a child or there is a Palestinian who is being killed just like Ashley Green was killed here in South Africa. For that reason, we want to remind you that the boycott campaign is very important. Because in every cent that you spend and, and in every rand that you spend on Israeli products, you actually support and you help the Israeli regime to buy a bullet to kill innocent people just like Ashley Kree was killed here. Thank you, Minna, for this very inspiring words. We are inspired by what you are. Thank you very much. You know, uh, when I spoke about administrative detention, uh, Jimmy, you should be familiar with that, as a victim of administrative detention. Uh, administrative detention means being locked up without a trial. We resented that in the apartheid era. We fought against that. It's happening now continues to happen in Israel, in Palestine and in Israel. The debate about whether they should be defended in courts, in Israeli courts or not, is a debate we also participated in, in our time. But as they chose to do, to defend themselves despite the uncertainty and perhaps illegality of appearing in an Israeli court. Their struggle that dem demonstrates that it is very much a similar struggle 
that we fought here in this country. But there's one concluding remark I wish to make. The slogan is, we resist to exist. And that's a chilling thought. It's chilling because if you don't resist, you fail to exist. And they have assumed that slogan as their own because the reality of the struggle in Israel today. It shows how deathly that struggle has become. And the Ashri Krils of yesteryear or the Ashri Kills of today in, in, in Palestine and in Israel. We can only assume that the struggle will intensify before it reaches greater heights. And all we can do as a free nation is to recommit ourselves, rededicate ourselves, to support in any, man any manner we can the struggle of the Palestinian people. You know, we've supported it over the years in different ways. But the intensification of the plight means that we should intensify our struggle on the ground, in the, in the arenas in which we participate in this country to find a solution. Chief Mandela uh, Mandela has pointed out several respects in which we can intensify the struggle. Boycott divestment campaign is a vital cog in that wheel. And we must intensify it at every level we can. When well, no, it's a privilege to have you here, we, you see that you are mid friends. We are many friends here. But we are not simply friends in the ordinary sense of the word. We are comrades in your struggle. And you fight a bitter struggle in Palestine, remember, us here who are with you sharing your pain. And more than sharing your pain, also committing our lives to your struggle. We do the best we can. Uh, Martin, will you pass a vote of thanks? Martin Janssen of the PSC will pass a vote of thanks. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, a vote of thanks to the following. Firstly, Mizan, for organizing and initiating this visit. Uh, Abdullah Griffith, thank you very much. And then our panel up here, the chairperson, Siraj Desai, our speakers, Nkosi Mandla Mandela, Father Michael Weeder, and Sheikh Ibrahim Gabriels. Thank you very much for gracing us with your presence and your wise words of inspiration. The Cape Cultural Collective for the uh, cultural items, uh, and sorry to Jordan, hopefully we'll have scope to, to give you uh, some air time. Uh, the organizing committee, and there are too many individuals to mention. There's a long WhatsApp group, so I'll mention the organizations. It's the MJC, uh, PSC Cape Town, uh, Friends of Mizan, uh, PF, PSF UCT, and uh, Al Quds Youth. I think I've, I've covered all of them. Um, and then, very importantly, to Community House for granting us the venue for free as a political gesture. Um, I'm just wondering if it's possible at all for uh, Muna during the the supper, maybe just to go around and uh, pay respects and connect to the other Is martyrs who we memorialize at Community House. We have been introduced to Ashley Kiel, or she has, um, but there are quite a few others uh, that would be worth um, going to, to see. And perhaps the manager, uh, Joa, could, could do that for us. Um, so Community House, we want to thank for the venue. And then all the service providers, the sound, the caterers, um, and also the media, and of course the sponsors who don't want to be named. Thank you very much. And our guest of honor, 
Thanks to you for gracing us with your presence. Thank you. This has been Thank live you, broadcast uh, from this. This had been live broadcast uh, from uh, the Ashley Creel Community Hall here in uh, in Salt River, and of course, uh, com welcoming winner Al Kurud uh, to Cape Town, her, her first official South African visit. Uh, Friends of Mizan, Palestine Solidarity Campaign, uh, Muslim Judicial Council, as well as useful Al Quds hosting uh, organisations, and of course. Uh, this has been carried live on the Voice of the Cape, Radio Al Ansar, Radio CN6, Salam Media, Radio uh, Islam, ITV, and CII, uh, Channel Islam International. Of course, also, uh, we know that uh, Munir Al Qud will still be visiting various other, uh, uh, various other uh, 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 places on her during the stay here in, in Cape Town. And of course, uh, she will be traveling on to other provinces as well on this. Uh, Nationwide to a uh, uh, could of course, uh, a resident of Sheikh Jarrah, growing up in the area, and uh, as you heard and would have known, in 2009, Israeli settlers took over half of the family's home under an Israeli law that allows uh, uh, Israelis to reclaim ownership of property uh, in, lost in 1948, and no such law entitles Palestinians to do the same in the West Jerusalem or any other parts of Israel. Munal could, of course. Uh, uh, at the moment uh, has been has been for for a long time uh, using social media and using the platforms afford uh, to get the message out there she has a lot of support globally and uh, through her work and through her activism we've seen uh, a tremendous upsurge in awareness around the Palestinian issue and she's put Sheikh Jarad front and center as an issue uh, on the world stage well, from myself, Mohammed Fasih Peterson, it's been a pleasure being in your company. Also, a big shukran to Mr. Nazim Peterson and uh, also Firaj Sheikh. We bid you assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Cross back to the studio, we'll be taking the adhan for a share, which is delayed uh, due to the program we've had. And the after, we'll be taking our live broadcast of our dhikr uh, from uh, the Grassy Park, Victoria Road Masjid.